So at this stage, we've done the math, right? We, we now know what, how much ventilation we need. It's actually mandatory that we fill out a certificate um, that shows that we've actually done this work. And it's not just for ventilation, by the way. This certificate is designed to record the R values or the insulation we're putting in, the windows, which credits we selected um, from table 406.2 and 406.3, um, the heating and cooling, um, as well as domestic hot water and the appliances we put in, whether uh, or not we did HVAC system testing, Remember, unless it's inside, you're going to have to do that. So you need to fill each of these components out. Um, building leakage, so that's the blower door test. That's the building tight component of it. Um, and then we get down to whole house ventilation system flow rates. Um, and again, that's from the uh, mechanical section of the, of the IMC and IRC. Um, and this is going to be something we're going to do. Now, just so you know, I went ahead and you know put in over on the upper left hand corner, 2,222 square feet. Um, and now I'm going to actually do this. So there's two ways to do it. I went ahead and converted the PDF to Word just so I can work in it and show it to you easily. Most of the time, however, you're going to get um, the piece of paper where you can print this as a sticker and you're going to circle and fill these out by hand so that when you either affix it to um, the breaker panel, or if you include it in your a copy, a photocopy of it in your paperwork, it's easy enough for your authority having jurisdiction to understand what you've done. But in this case, I've gone ahead and I've converted it. So, are the system controls labeled correctly? Yes, I went ahead and put a nice label on that. The whole house mechanical ventilation system, operation and maintenance, the O&M instructions, were these provided to the building owner? This is a critical component. I mentioned just a few earlier, um, we love continuous ventilation because you just turn the darn thing on, you don't worry about it. The number one problem with ventilation systems, um, it's challenging to size and design them sometimes, but the real challenge is if someone is not instructed how to use it correctly, they're likely to turn it off. And a tighter home without an operational ventilation system is not a good idea. So there's other components in our training where we're showing you um, whole home operation manuals. We're going to go ahead and say, yes, we did that. And I'm going to say that um, we provided this to Janice, homeowner. Um, and hopefully Janice is cool with this. And I'm going to put in a date. Let's just go ahead and say um, August 16th, 2021. Right? So now we've got this in here. So the first thing we want to, then we want to go down next and say, all right, which of these did we do? Whole house exhaust fan. Um, again, that would be the local exhaust only um, running to serve the needs of our whole house ventilation system. Maybe we put in a balanced ventilation system, um, or maybe we did um, a supply side or an HRV and we integrated it into the air handler. For this example, we're going to go ahead and um, make sure that it's this one they know that we did, and we're going to say that we did the master bathroom fan. Now, it's really common to use the hall bath, the master bath, or um, even most popular is to use the exhaust fan in the laundry room. Because even though most of our modern exhaust fans are quiet, it still can trip people up to hear that thing running all the time. You get the least amount of complaints if you put it here. So I'm putting it there and just making sure it's really obvious. So. Now we're going to go down to, um, you know, did we set the, what did we specify as the runtime? If you remember correctly, um, I wanted to put this as 100% of the time, or this is actually hours per day, so 100% of the time would be 24 hours a day. Um, the whole house ventilation calculated design minimum flow rate per plan submitted. Um, so what was that number? Does anyone remember? Um, well, depending on how we set it up, it was 83 CFM if we were doing it just for exhaust only. And then how was this actually commissioned? What did we actually get when we commissioned this? So when someone actually showed up and used a flow pan, a flow hood, a bolometer, um, any of those tools that are common for doing this, um, we could measure it. And let's say we, we performed the measurement and it was 82 CFM. Um, that's pretty darn close. Um, usually within 1% is the tolerance allowable there. 
Um, that is, uh, by the way, a recommended practice. Each jurisdiction will, may get on you if it's not meeting it exactly. So maybe you want to put in, again, we talked about putting in a 90 CFM fan. So if we did that, it would likely be tested at something like 89. Now this part gets really interesting. Do the whole house ventilation flow test include GPS and timestamp verification? Um, so an easy way to do that is with your smartphone to take a picture of yourself doing the testing, take a picture of the test results. Um, images are automatically um, timestamped and will usually be geolocated. Um, so that's one of the many ways that this can be done. There's also software for recording all of that information. I'm going to say yes, this was absolutely done. Keep in mind, each and every one of these are items that could be looked at by your authority having jurisdiction. The form is mandatory, but the better you do this, the, the more accurately you do this, the less challenges both you and your code official are going to have in making sure that this was done correctly. So any other commissioning notes um, that we found here, um, I'm going to go ahead and say um, 12 foot ceiling, difficult to reach without extender arm on flow box. Now that may just be me saying that, but that's the kind of thing that's nice for a code official to know that if they were going to double check your airflow, for instance. So there you go. We've just filled out one of these forms. Um, we can now print this again onto sticker paper. Um, or we can um, you know, photocopy it, include it with the paperwork, but this is a great way to make sure that we're meeting all of the requirements with documenting this. As we get near the end here, it's really important not just to make some of these decisions for yourself and to be thinking about how this impacts your ability to sell and the experience of your future home buyers, but we also wanna think about making this work in just a basic effective way, right? How do you fit this into your sequencing and how do you make sure your trades get used to this? So one of the earliest steps you can do is make sure that your plans clearly illustrate your ventilation approach, as well as document what your additional code credits are going to be. The better you can integrate all of this into your plans, the easier it will be to reference in scopes of work at in pre-construction meetings, or in submittals to your jurisdiction. There are really a lot of sections worth reviewing here. Um, we've put all of these out on this so that you can individually go to any different point in the Washington State International Mechanical Code version and find it. So the basics 401.2 is your basic um, ventilation requirement and 403.1 your basic ventilation system requirements. Um, as you go down, um, your outdoor airflow rates is 403.3. Your whole house ventilation is 403.4. Your whole house ventilation rate is 403.4.2. Um, your different components, 403.4.6, um, all the way down to all the subs of 403.4.6. Um, your testing and your certification 403.4.6.7 um, and 403.6.6. Um, system controls, 403.5. Again, there's really a lot in here. We're just really making it crystal clear. There's also some in section five worth looking at on pressure equalization and exhaust installation. Now, that has been an, a whole lot. I've mentioned this group of people a couple of times before, but as we enter into not only having to chronicle how tight our buildings are and ensuring that our ductwork is tight when it's deeply buried um, or that prove that it's been inside the thermal boundary, we have this new world of potential with whole house ventilation. There's a group, two different groups out there that are trained to do a lot of this kind of specialty testing. First are the ResNet HERS raters and second are PTCS, which stands for Performance Tested Comfort System, HVAC Specialist. These people have been learned and taught how to do a lot of different types of commissioning of homes and systems. If you go to the Washington State Energy, uh, Washington State University Energy Programs Energy Code website, um, you can download these lists of HERS raters and duct testers. So these are some really great ways to get started 
trying to track down um, who would be in a great addition to your team to make sure all of these commissioning needs are met. Again, some side benefits is these are the people that can qualify you for Energy Star, get you a HERS rating, help you look at utility incentives that might be available, or federal tax credits. So it's a very valuable resource to have on your job site and as a part of your team. 